looking forward to what the NSA can do for us in terms of um, in terms of cybersecurity. Um, and I know this isn't like a big thing that's that's happened recently. What's up? Nothing. What? It was my what topic. Yeah, sorry. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I was responding to you, what you were saying. You're good. <laughs> so. Something that's kind of been happening since before the 2020 election, actually since 2018, is did you know that General Paul M. Nakasoki, director of the NSA, is also head of the U.S. Cyber Command? Did not. The United States now, officially, since kind of the beginning and the escalation of ransomware attacks, both to our hospital phone and internet service provider companies and to our core businesses like the colonial pipeline and the jbs beef plants we now have an actual cybersecurity command a collaboration center that is dedicated to thwarting and controlling the cyber attacks that are coming from different places all over the world and it's something that's been happening for a few years and as a matter of fact their biggest um project was the 2020 election but so why didn't they stop any of the uh the bullshit that's going on well they the, could, what, what, what they, are they what do they call themselves the secret cabal <laughs> no <laughs> the cybersecurity yeah. collaboration center but no in the uh in time magazine they did a whole like center spread about the secret cabal that helped save america oh i don't even know about that I, I read a New York Times article actually describing everything that they've been doing for the past couple of months. I didn't know they were referred to as anything else. So, since 2018, they've been working on identifying traffic that's coming from known cybersecurity groups. Uh, one of the recent ones that is Russian based that's called uh, R Evil Ransomware Group. And they were able to track down a lot of their internet traffic that's coming in and out of the United States. And, um, as soon as a Russian base group found out, they shut down all communications that they were making to the United States servers, which the NSA is really proud of. The CIA is 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 OK with it. The FBI is the only one that's kind of up in the air about it. They don't know exactly where they stand. But General Nagasoka has been very, very proud about the work that they've done. And one of the biggest things, uh, hurdles that they've had to do is to try to track down a, um, what's called a, um, oh my God, I already forgot. Hmm? A diary? No, not a diary. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's basically a network of computers that can be slaves, essentially. But it's, it's called a, a trick bot. Sure. Well. It's, it's called Chickbot servers, basically. They install programs onto your computer where they can take control in the background and make your computers do certain things. That's how hackers are able to do uh, distributed denial of service attacks, also uh, DDoS, and a uh, couple other things. But they were able to successfully navigate that and determine that that wasn't a factor for the 2020 elections. They were really, really worried about um, the voter machine hacks. But they've been doing a lot. Especially when it comes to research. Yeah, we're not even going to get into that. Why would, you pl why would you plug a voting machine into the internet in the first place? They didn't. But they were worried about wireless communications connecting to those. Because just because... But wouldn't they have to have some sort of receiver in them? Yeah, every computer has a sort of Wi-Fi receiver nowadays. Like, even our phones do. And it's super simple to actually break into it. I broke it all the voting my machine if they don't need that's what I'm saying with the voting machine if they don't need internet, why would they have any kind of receiver for that? I totally agree I agree with you you know voting machines don't need wireless con communications, but um other than investigating every possible a uh, cyber attack for the twenty twenty elections, they did manage to recover majority of the cryptocurrency ransom from the colonial pipeline hacks they didn't give us an actual ballpark number of, as to how much of a percentage they recovered but all 
General Nakasoke could confirm was that they collected a certain amount. I don't know. I think we just turned off the internet for a while. I don't know. And then I, everyone detoxed. I kind of like the fact that the United States is making, the United States Army is making an effort to actually keep the United States cyber secure. You know, it, it's something yeah, that we've been missing again, for a long time. But then again, oh, I think it was missing for the reason that nobody wanted to give the U.S. government that power. Right? Because... Also something that should have been set up when the internet came to fruition. Mm -hmm. Like, once the government started to realize, oh, the internet's real, we're going to be using this. Hey, let's go ahead and get a department team to make sure that everything's secure. Yeah. I don't know. Like, back then, when the internet was being established, and you know, it was it was already... Actually, let me drop some history on y'all. The The original idea for the internet was the North American uh, Defense Network. I, I don't remember the actual acronym, but it was... The, the internet is a byproduct of the U.S. government. Cool. Like, back in the 70s. I don't remember the acronym uh, to what it was, but I can tell you that it started in the United States back in the 70s when we were still kind of worrying about the Cold War with the launching of nukes. And then once Russia fell, the uh, USSR fell and became a country, you know, so today. <laughs> that's when, kind of when the internet was fully established for market use. And I mean, back then, when you set your computer up for the internet and you set up a website, you're, you were required to set up your own name server as well. Because we didn't have national name servers, but now we have all this technology, and we need we honestly need a way to defend it. Yeah, but we're setting up a way to defend and take care of the internet now instead of investing into the blockchain and moving forward. Well, it, it's not going to be over all of the internet. It'll just be over any uh, communications within the United States or anything that's targeting an asset of the United States. So, like, our electrical grid, our water grids, fucking oil pipelines, the meat industry, the food industry, anything that resides within United States borders. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, wouldn't it be worth investing into a, a DeFi system that's going to get you off the server system and get you more onto the blockchain? I, I do agree that moving towards there would be a good idea, but not many industries are invested in the blockchain and a majority of our infrastructure isn't well while that Again, is a great idea if the u.s government <laughs> put a bunch of money and resources behind it it would get there you know I, what i mean like yeah i i don't see that happening anytime soon especially with the current state of our government and the massive divide between both parties like in the future sure maybe if we get a third party like an actual like dedicated labor party I, I, I see that happening. You know, 30 I years ago. I don't think the, the line, socialists but... would get that put together. I don't know. I mean, that. they would have a lot of ideas, but... Yeah. I'm just excited to, to know the fact that our United States government, our army, is doing more than just physical shit now. But I thought that was the whole purpose of the NSA from the very beginning. Like, what have they been doing if they're not <laughs> protecting our internet? I don't I don't think it was understood that the NSA would take over for that, really. Like but, okay. why do we have the NSA? Why what is it what is it so, good for? So before <laughs> before the US Cyber Command, it was understood that each company was in charge of its own of its own intellectual assets, which includes server, server farms, all of that other good shit. But with with the increased I mean, yeah, attack and way. with the increased Especially with WannaCry back in 2017. Like, I was working healthcare at the time. That shit sucked. Yeah, but then again, what does the NSA do then? I don't know. But good thing now. The, the other good piece of this is that the NSA has a, has a collaboration center. Other than just their cyber command. 
Um, they're actively sharing more information now than they were in the past about uh, security threats and actors, if you will. Um, some still complain that it could be a lot better, but at least we're sharing information now. Oh man, an accessory. Hold on. See, NJ agrees with me. Somebody, please. Whoa. There. <laughs> Explain to us what the NSA does. I hope now. you're happy. Look. <laughs> wow. Okay. Just throw me out like that. Just make me feel bad. <laughs> Here, I'll turn off my blurring. Ooh, I don't think I Wait. can. Wait. NSA, is that National Security Agency? Yes. Yeah. So what's the gun one? That's NRA. ATF. The NRA is the, the National Rifle Association. That's an organization, not a oh. government body. Oh. An RA. Okay. Thank you. I was getting very confused. I was like, what does the gun organization have to do with this? <laughs> no, no, wrong one, wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what the gun organization would have anything to do with cybersecurity unless if they're shooting their pew pews at... Um, uh, at that's what I was saying, I was confused. Go ahead. Yeah. So the NSA is to look at cybersecurity threats and the cybersecurity threat portion is looking at cybersecurity threats? Yeah. Okay, so in general, like Nakasome a way, didn't share <laughs> too much information about how they're categorizing and collecting this data. The only thing that he could actually tell us, which I'm certain some, some stuff's just out of clearance for majority of the world, especially us being citizens, we get, we get low-level clearance just being citizens. But, I mean, with active investigations, I'm sure they're not going to share anything but they've been able to point out several big um, big uh, cybersecurity actors, and they still continue to shout or uh, share that the 2020 um, elections are facing a lot of uh, cybersecurity threats from Russia, but they didn't really show that much information. Yeah, well, the... The Democratic Party has been really obsessed with Russia for the last two years for some reason, too. Or uh, I should say six years. I mean, we let, let's be honest. We've always been obsessed with Russia. That's never going to go away. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like... I mean, we all know Hillary Clinton was the one that actually colluded with Russia. It's been proven now. Email say it all. <laughs> <laughs> Hear her emails if we had them. <laughs> <laughs> but that, so, that's, that's enough. For so, me. at so at the end of the day, you're telling me that uh, the NSA has made a new cybersecurity division. Mm -hmm. No, and no. Their goal is to catch cyber terrorists. The, the, the cybersecurity division has existed for six years, or not for six years. Sorry, has existed since 2018. Would that be six years? Almost six years. And this is around the same time that the general, uh, Nakasome, actually became the director of the NSA. He became director of okay. the NSA in May of 2018. So, and didn't you tell us that the NSA is in charge of the TSA too? No, I think that their own thing. I think you're just throwing acronyms. I thought, acronyms I thought out that there. was one of your. No, I thought that was one of your topics that you said the. Uh, NSA was in charge of the TSA. No. No, the TSA is their own thing. NJ, oh no no. NJ, look it up. Oh, NJ, look it up. Just kidding. The TSA is an agency of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Ah okay. Honestly, I think. How many terrorists have the TSA ever caught? In its 20 years of existence? Uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> the next time I go, the next time I go through a TSA checkpoint, I don't, I don't want to be pointed out. 
Ask him. Ask him. Hey, how many cherries have y'all got? <laughs> I'll see if he lets me record like, it for the podcast. To this day, there's like the official number is like zero. Yeah. But uh, on to our next topic. Sorry, TSA. We just got to give you a little bit of hard time. Let us through the. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to let me fly anytime soon anyway, so screw it. <laughs> they, uh, they were talking about doing that vaccine passport for flying. Mm hmm. So, not to get too off topic, real quick, Alan. I, quick question: How is uh, how you feeling about the uh, new variant? Honestly, I'm a little scared. I've I've been I've been keeping an eye on it way more vigilantly than I did with the Delta. Um, it's super infectious. Not a lot of people have the uh, same. Uh, I guess can't breathe effect. I I can't, I can't think of the actual terminology for it. And um, other than it being more infectious, it, it its death count rises astronomically. Uh, south. But there's been nobody died from it yet. No, there has, dude. Several Omicron? people. Uh-uh. Uh, not, in no one, no not in the United States. Not in the United States. No one's died from it. Not even in South Africa. No one's died from it yet. Yeah, they have. They went from 14,000 deaths a day. Three days later, they have 3,500 deaths. Yeah, but they're still dying. They're still dealing with the Delta and all that. The Omicron, they don't have that many people infected or, sorry, yet. Sorry, no, no, not deaths, infections. Sorry, they're they're infections. Yeah, yeah, no, no, sorry, it, I got it's it highly infection. Yeah. yeah, but nobody's died from no. They haven't. They haven't found a dead body that tested positive for this variant yet. Yeah, and then to top it off, I mean, there's already forty countries that have the virus already. I mean. And the, then also, like, 70% of the infections already found in the U.S. were vaccinated people. As a matter of fact, I know one story, and, and this isn't an official topic um, for us. Uh, the New York Thanksgiving Comic Con is considered a super spreader because 14 attendees, 14 people attended, and they tested positive for the Omicron. A variant, and they interacted with thousands of people each fucking day. Yeah. Oh no, it's. It, I mean, it's serious. It's something to take effect, but then again, I mean, they're th they're saying it's probably the least deadly strain out of all of them. It's just probably the most infectious strain out of all of them. Yeah, we just there's just not enough information out there. Like there there haven't been enough people who were infected. There haven't been enough people who died, which is. Which is good to say, but also a little worrisome because we do want to know more about the virus. Yeah, especially this one. Be, the, I, I think the biggest red flag is that it's most likely the vaccine is very ineffective against this particular strain. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps up another great episode. And don't forget to join our amazing and supportive community on Discord. In our Discord, you can find game nights, watch parties, food picks, Dungeons and Dragons, and more. What's not to love about that? We have a little something for everyone. Head over to our website, officialmillennials.com, and you'll find more info, especially our featured gamer of the week. Speaking of something for everyone, we have a book club. We read a book almost every month and talk through it together. We also have a special perk for our subs to discuss other books in a series called Chapter 2. Don't forget to swing by YouTube and uh, drop us a follow at Official Millennials. You can also find us on Twitter at Mills Official. We appreciate all the support and y'all have a good one. This is an Official Millennials production.